Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and I get asked a lot of little questions about sunscreens and I get asked a lot by small brands in particular, should we or can we have our own sunscreen? So I've prepared a video to help answer this question for you. The first thing you need to check is, can you have a sunscreen as a cosmetic? Now on this screen you can see a table that outlines how sunscreens are viewed in different parts of the world. And in some cases you'll see there's special conditions or extra regulations you might need to consider over the presentation, the form or the claims of the product to see whether it's considered a drug, therapeutic good or cosmetic. Now in this video, and especially for small brands, I'm going to be focusing specifically on the regulations where sunscreens are regulated as cosmetics because where they're regulated as either drugs or therapeutic goods or special use, there's significantly more regulations, manufacturing, packaging and registration considerations that maybe aren't appropriate for a small brand. So first of all, is a sunscreen a cosmetic in your part of the world? And if not, then it's not suited to small brands. The next thing I wanna ask you is why? Why do you wanna have a sunscreen in your cosmetic range? If it's simply to have a sunscreen because all the other brands have a sunscreen, then again, I would suggest no, that's not a good enough reason to have a sunscreen. There's additional costs in formulation, evidence requirements, stability tests, which I'll go into in a moment, but these can all be prohibitive for a small brand. And if you don't have much different to say about your product, there's going to be no commercial advantage for you bringing out a sunscreen as part of your range. However, if you are in a region where sunscreens are regulated as cosmetics or could be if you meet certain additional conditions and you are actually promoting the benefits of the product besides its SPF factor, then it could be a good addition to your range. There's a lot of data to show that daily use of SPF protection is beneficial to the skin in more than one way. But you shouldn't just add an SPF to your range for the sake of having a sunscreen. It should instead be a moisturizer with other benefits and SPF added, or a foundation with SPF added. But again, check your local region and regulations to see if you can have that type of product as a cosmetic in the first place. Now let's look at some of the additional considerations you need to make if you're going to have a sunscreen as part of your range. First of all, you need to hold evidence of the SPF rating. Now this SPF testing must be done by a licensed testing facility or testing facility showing that it is able to conduct the testing to either the ASNZS standard or the ISO standard, depending on where you are in the world. Now these sorts of SPF tests will vary in cost, but as an example, SPF testing to an SPF of 30 is around two and a half thousand Australian dollars as of right now, June 2020. So this cost could change. And of course it could be different costs depending on where you are in the world. Now this doesn't include water resistant claims, which also aren't usually suitable for cosmetic products. Again, you'll need to check the regulations for your region to see if you can have this type of product as a cosmetic in the first place. And if you are, you need to send your formula off for testing. Now you can't use another formula provided to you even if it has SPF testing, you as the company must hold your own SPF testing results. So even if you use a formula supplied to you from another company, you still need to send your product off for SPF testing and hold the evidence yourself. And that testing of course must be done to the required standard for your region. You can't simply refer to the formula or that another company has done the testing and then assume it's okay for you. You as the brand putting the product onto the market must hold the evidence and the SPF test results to the required standard for your region. So if you want to have even a moisturizer with SPF 15 or a foundation with SPF 15, 
you must still send your product off for testing and hold the SPF results to validate that claim. Now let's talk about the formulation. There's several things about the formulation that you need to understand if you want to have a sunscreen or SPF in your range. First of all, there's some very strict limits over the different sunscreen materials that can be used in different products and these differ around the world. So you will need to speak with a chemist about the inputs they're using specific to the region you're in. And again, remember I'm talking here solely about creating cosmetic sunscreens, not those regulated as drugs, therapeutic goods or special use cosmetics. So you'll need to make sure that any sunscreen agents used are used within the regulatory limit for cosmetics in your region and they differ all around the world. Another very important part of the formulation is the formulation itself. Even the right amounts of SPF agents that would usually yield a high SPF in another formulation base can yield a very different SPF result if used in a different formulation base. So it's not as simple as 10% of this UV filter will give you an SPF of 10. It totally depends on the formula, how well it spreads, whether it's water or oil based, and so many other contributing factors. So you'll need to spend extra time on the formulation development. Another thing to do with the formulation is the stability of the formulation. If you're making an SPF claim, you need to hold stability testing data that shows the UV filters are held homogenous and active over the shelf life of the product. So there's additional time and costs in stability data. Now all cosmetic products are required to be safe when used as directed for the period that they're on the market. So you should be holding stability data for all of your cosmetic products. But with SPF claims, you need to do additional testing, usually to assay for the actives to prove that they're held homogenous and are at the amounts that you're claiming in your formula to help maintain the stated SPF over the entire shelf life of the formula. This means additional costs in stability testing. So far, you'll need to spend extra time in the formulation development to get a sunscreen that spreads well to maintain a really good SPF. And you'll need to spend additional costs in stability testing to help prove the homogeneity and presence of the sunscreen actives over the shelf life of the product. This not only costs additional, but it adds to the time of development as well. Which is why with so many sunscreen products on the market, I say, why? Why do you wanna have an SPF product? Now this isn't to say that you can't have an SPF product, and it isn't to say it isn't a great idea to add some SPF protection to normal cosmetics where you're permitted in your region. Because moisturizers with SPF can provide extra benefit to the user as well as any actives that might be present. What I am saying is you do need to check the regulations for your region carefully. Can you have a sunscreen product with SPF claims in your country in the first place? If not, you can't be making sunscreen or SPF claims about your cosmetic product. If you are still keen on having a product with SPF in your range and you've checked and make sure it's going to comply with cosmetics in your region, then make sure you allow extra time in development, extra costs associated with development, extra time and costs associated with SPF testing, and extra time and costs associated with stability testing to prove efficacy of your product throughout its shelf life. As I mentioned, there's a significant body of data that proves that having SPF protection in daily use products is of great benefit to the consumer. But whether or not it's gonna be of great benefit to your brand depends on how you plan to implement it in your brand and if you're able to have that type of product as a cosmetic in your region in the first place. I hope this video has been helpful to help you decide, should you have a sunscreen in your brand? Formulating sunscreens can be challenging, so I've got some great formulation topics and formulation videos to help get you started on this channel. Just make sure you comply with your local regulations and keep the additional time and costs involved in mind.
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating!